an Iowa man has been sentenced for hanging, murdering, and then burning the body of a black man, okay? This is a horrific story. This man has been found guilty of strangling a Grinnell man to death, was sentenced to life in prison on Monday. Stephen Vogel, the guy you just saw, 32, of Grinnell was convicted in mid November after the body of Michael Williams, 44 years of age, was found in 2020, burning in a rural Jasper County ditch. Police believe Williams was killed on or around September 12th of 2020 and had been in Vogel's basement for days before being burned in a ditch. Uh, let's put up a picture of his mugshot again. Cold blooded killer. Now in this situation, I'm going to disagree with the local NAACP and stand with the family on this one. And I will explain why in a moment. Judge Sean Showers sentenced Vogel to life in prison without the possibility of parole. And five years because Vogel was also convicted on a charge of abusing a corpse. Three other residents in the town, Johnson, Julia Cox, and Roy Garner were accused of destroying evidence of the killing. Garner and Cox were also accused of abusing the corpse of Mr. Williams and helping Vogel transport the body. Now, Mr. Williams is black, okay? Everybody else involved, they are white. The story gets deeper. During the trial, prosecutors presented evidence and witnesses who indicated Vogel, the killer, admitted to three witnesses he killed Williams out of jealousy stemming from a love triangle involving Vogel's girlfriend. Cody Johnson testified, Vogel told him he killed Black Mike by clubbing Black Mike's head from behind and hanging him with a rope in the basement of his home, of Vogel's home. Williams head injuries were consistent with blunt force trauma. And Williams appeared to have been strangled for five to six minutes according to Iowa State Medical Examiner, uh, the medical examiner's office. Williams was black, all right? All four people charged with white authorities and the Iowa Nebraska chapter of the NAACP said no evidence showed Williams was targeted and killed because of his race. I disagree with the NAACP, I agree with the family. The family and other individuals familiar with the case in Iowa said the imagery of the death was aligned with historical lynchings in the US, which Black men were killed, many hanged, after claims of sexual contact with white women. Now, I highlight this story because one, the criminal justice system got it right. Life without the possibility of parole. The judge even said the reason why we have a statute that allows life without the possibility of parole is because of people like you, okay? Judge got it right, jury got it right. Criminal justice system got it right. Mr. Williams will never come back, so you cannot get justice in that sense no matter what. But I wanna highlight this story. Number one, it is not a microcosm, okay? It is part of a systemic permeation, a structure in the United States of America. And we have to deconstruct the madness, number one. Number two, how dare the NAACP even utter there's no evidence of racially motivated criminal activity. You see, I'm talking directly to you all now, okay? The manner in which this man was killed, the contact with a white woman resulting in a hanging, the issue of this killer bragging to his white friends that he killed Black Mike. The four individuals who allegedly helped him not only 
get rid of the body or attempt to, but violate the body. You don't think any of that in NAACP local chapter. You don't think any of that was racially motivated. Well, here's what I would challenge you to do. And I'm down with the NAACP, I'm a member of the Atlanta branch NAACP. I'm sure somebody from the organization will send me an email after this goes on social media. I don't give a damn, send the email. I encourage you to come on the show and tell me why in the hell would you ever conclude that this had no racial element connected. All right, uh, Mr. Malone, what are your thoughts about this story? <clears throat> Absolutely agree with you. You know, I'm a son of Mississippi. Um, and when I think about this story, I think about young Emmett Till. We just heard a couple of days ago where the Department of Justice closed the Emmett Till's case after Cal and Brian Dunn came out a couple years ago to uh, Timothy Tyson saying that. Part of her story was a lie, and that nothing that young boy did was was uh, d deserved him being lynched in Mississippi. Mm -hmm. And so we haven't got justice for Emmett Till, but we see justice in this case. But I also think that we got to hold the NAACP accountable. I too am a part of the NAACP, but when we look at the NAACP, the NAACP have became an elitist organization, right? They're an elitist organization at this point that don't really look at the issues that are affecting everyday people, and they tend to say what. What they think the polarized community want to hear, right? So I think in this case, the NAACP got it absolutely wrong. Everything about this is racially you know, motivated. Every single thing about this is racially motivated. So the question here is, how the hell do we hold the NAACP accountable? Because the National Association of the NAACP should have retracted this message. Yeah, they should have retracted well this. I agree 100%. And brother, this is how we hold all organizations accountable. We're okay with going against the grain when it comes to situations where the narrative simply doesn't seem right to us. We're okay with standing against allies at times in order to push the ultimate agenda of progress.